the outgoing Commanding General Philippine Army, Lieutenant General Hernando DCA Iriberi, will give his remarks. This will be followed by his reading of the orders for his relinquishment of command. His Excellency Benigno S. Aquino III, President, Republic of the Philippines, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Honorable Voltaire T. Gasmin, the Department of National Defense, Major General Eduardo M. Año, the incoming Commanding General of the Philippine Army, and his wife, Jean Most Reverend Bishop Leopoldo S. Tumulak, Bishop of the Military Ordinariate of the Philippines, my wife Agnes and our children present, Honorable Mel Sinen Sarmento, Chairman of the Multi Sector Advisory Board of the Philippine Army Transformation Roadmap. With another member, Ms. Tina Monson Palma, former, for, former Commanding General of the Philippine Army, headed by, of course, our Secretary of National Defense, the Honorable Voltaire T. Gasmin, Lieutenant General Jaime de los Santos, the 42nd CGPA, General Alexander B. Yano, the 49th CGPA, General Esperon, the 47th CGPA, General Ebrado, the 50th CGPA, General Mapago, the 52nd CGPA, General Arturo B. Ortiz, the 53rd CGPA, former flag officer in command, Admiral Goles, and former CGPAF, General de la Cruz, the Deputy Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, Major General Edgar F. Pallorina, the Major Service Commanders, Lieutenant General Jeffrey Delgado, Commanding General of the Philipp Philippine Air Force, Vice Admiral Jesus Milan, the Flag Officer in Command of the Philippine Navy, Major General Romeo T. Tanalgo, Commandant of the Philippine Marines, the Unified Commanders present, Lieutenant General Aurelio Baladad, Lieutenant General Felicito Virgilio Trinidad, and Mrs. Trinidad, the Superintendent of the Philippine Military Academy, Lieutenant General Oscar Lopez, Commander of the Philippine Army, Major General Ardi Santillan, the Chief of Staff of the Philippine Army, Major General Rafael Valencia and Mrs. Valencia. Other commanders, the division commanders, commanders of the support, Army support units, members of the Joint Special Personal Staff, and APSUS commanders of the Joint Staff and Joint Staff, Foreign, foreign Armed Forces Attaches. May I also acknowledge the members of the PMA Matikas class of 1983 and their ladies, please rise to be recognized. <laughs> members of the General Personal Special and Technical Staff of the Philippine Army, members of the Combat Support and Combat Service Support Units of the Philippine Army, other officers present, Enlisted personnel, headed by the Sergeant Major of the Philippine Army, Chief Master Sergeant Willie Avilunar, civilian employees, headed by Ms. Leti Lacanieta, the members of the media, other my brothers and sisters who are present, 
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Just over 17 months ago, as I took on the challenge of command and leadership of the Philippine Army, I defined key focus areas, which could be our priorities under my watch. These were building up from the Army Transformation Roadmap and the IPSP Bayanihan, pursuing the Army Capability Upgrade Program, enhancing joint and combined operational capabilities, making the Army as a decisive force through ensuring best readiness conditions, and developing our troops by elevating competencies and upgrading systems and facilities. Key thrusts, all integral to the strengthening the foundation for building a truly world-class army. It is to the credit of the men and women of the Philippine Army that significant gains have been made in these focus areas. That they happened during my term as Commanding General of the Philippine Army is by the grace of the Lord Almighty and the hard work of every member of the organization. The high level of commitment and dedication had made it possible for the Philippine Army to post this milestone and affirm the commitment to transformation. I therefore sincerely thank the Lord Almighty for his blessings and perpetual protection during my tenure as the 56th Commanding General of the Philippine Army. I also express my most profound gratitude to our President, the Commanding Commander-in-Chief, His Excellency Benigno S. Sakino III, for his trust and confidence in entrusting to me the command of the Philippine Army. The Secretary of National Defense, the Honorable Voltaire T. Gasmin, for his wise counsel and guidance. The former Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, General Gregorio Pio P. Katapang, Jr., for his leadership. I am also personally grateful to officers, enlisted personnel, and civilian workforce of the Philippine Army who have supported me during my term. My utmost thanks for your dedication, hard work, and heroism. I am truly honored and deeply humbled to have served with you. Ang inyong katapatan, kasipagan, at kabayanihan na siyang naging sandigan ng ating bayan ay ang dahilan kung bakit natin nakamit ang lahat ng ating tagumpay. And to my wife, Agnes, and our children, and other family members who stood beside me and showed their support as I walked the perilous path of an army soldier. Thank you. Words are not enough to describe how truly grateful I am. As I relinquish my command of the Philippine Army, I share highlights of what has been truly a fulfilling and progressive year and five months of working together with you. If there is one milestone that represents the quality of our output, it is the historic conferment of institutionalized status under the performance governance system and the awarding of the gold trade seal last October 2014. It affirms that we as an institution are on the right track. It binds us in victory as we set our sights on the next goal under the Army Transformation Roadmap. Let these twin recognitions inspire everyone to sustain the drive to be a world-class army our countrymen can truly be proud of. I also fervently hope that we will finally be recognized as an island of good governance and our internal reforms will be considered as an exemplar of valuable public service and performance excellence. The push to build capability is marked by continuing organizational changes being made for the Army to be mission capable across all mission areas. This includes the activation of units and the facilitation of trainings and the enhancement 
programs for the sustainment of different divisions and ground operations. As such, our units in the field have posted positive gains in our focused military operations as we live up to our pledge as the protector of the Filipino people. They have scored major combat against high-value threat groups' personalities and the capture of their key leaders who now face the trial before the bar of justice. The sustained improvement in our basic competencies, coupled with the collaboration of our stakeholders for peace, have paved the way for the establishment of peace and development in a number of provinces in our country. It also encompasses the implementation of the Combat Leadership Enhancement Program and the Battalion Commanders Symposia, which aim to enhance the leadership competencies and the unit capabilities of our battalions and companies. In the area of force readiness, we have developed a solid and rational basis for the Army's organization and the capability thrust over the long term with the Philippine Army for Structure 2028. Furthermore, the Philippine Army Organizational Development Plan will now serve as a blueprint on how the Army can, can and should develop its key systems and internal processes. On an institutional level, the Philippine Army operating concept has been crafted to serve as an enduring guide for the Philippine Army's organization, institutional and capability development plans. We now have an enduring framework that will help define the Army's capabilities and capacities are applied in any and all eventualities in the future. On the upgrading of competency levels, while we continue to search for innovative ways to sustain our forward momentum, we have come up with initiatives that will leave an indelible mark on our organization. Foremost among these are the personal readiness bands, this one I'm wearing right on my pocket, that reflects the individual soldier's readiness do his multifarious task and the best best competition to test unit readiness for any exigency in a highly challenging security landscape. Our soldiers are now equally adept in tracking their personal pursuits as more holistic measures have been established to test their individual readiness. Through the personal readiness badge, ratings in physical fitness tests, standing in schooling, scores in marksmanship, net take-home pay, and performance evaluation ratings are now included in the evaluation to make them more responsible stewards of their own military careers. The same holds true in testing organizational readiness, as a wide array of key measurement areas are made part of the consideration to better evaluate unit preparedness for any mission. Over and above these innovations, several command priority programs on organizational development, intelligence upgrade, health services improvement, character enhancement, doctrine development are continually being revised to suit the changing needs of the times. Enhancing operational capabilities has required a comprehensive review and revision of outdated policies as well as the formulation of new ones. Among these is the institutionalization of the Philippine Army Character Enhancement Program, which will serve as a tool in improving the moral values, spiritual, character, and ethical standards of the Philippine Army personnel. Finally, just last week, our fiscal management system passed the rigorous audit and has been recommended for ISOR certification 921-2008. These are the highlights of the progressive work that we have been able to do together in my time as the Commanding General of the Philippine Army. The recognitions as well as the substantive innovations show that we are moving forward in our journey towards genuine transformation and organizational development. Your Excellency, before I end, please allow me to submit to you my tour of duty report 
and the Philippine Army operating concept. These documents reflect our humble contribution to the achievement of your vision of a for the Filipino people as we walk the straight and righteous path. Indeed, there is still much to do. The Philippine Army must push for reform in order to transform. Thus, I call on each of, of our soldiers and units to adhere to genuine transformation founded on good governance and performance excellence. Let us continue to work, to work towards the goal of transforming to a professional army committed to its mandate of serving our people and securing the land. Remember always that we have a duty to defend and a responsibility to deliver only the best service to our country and people. With a fulfilled heart, confidence and trust, our base camp 2016 transformation targets. In my assumption, as the Commanding General of the Philippine Army last February 7, 2015, I prayed to ask our Lord's blessing for all the personnel of the Philippine Army. So today, as I end my tour as the Commanding General of the Philippine Army, let me raise this prayer to our Almighty, whose amazing grace makes us achieve our aspirations for our organization. Dear Lord and Divine Protector, kindly bless the Philippine Army. Put your saving hand on each of one of our officers, men and women, and civilian employees and deliver them through every challenge and battle for peace, progress, and transformation. Maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Mabuhay ang hukbong katihan ng Pilipinas. Mabuhay kayong lahat. I, I shall now read my relinquishment order. Headquarters, Philippine Army. Office of the Commanding General, Port Andres Bonifacio, Metro Manila, 15 July 2015. Office Orders Number 01, Relinquishment of Command. Pursuant to Section 1, General Orders Number 771, General Headquarters, Armed Forces of the Philippines, dated 14 July 2015. I hereby relinquish the position as Commanding General Philippine Army effective this day, and I sign in your presence. General Anu, I'm ready to be released.